What you guys got another video on 10 settings to change on your router. We're going to take a look at changing the settings on the TP-Link router here, but these settings will be the same for any type of router that you're using. They just may be in different locations of your router. So sign into your router's menu. You will need to know the password to sign in. And once you do that, we'll go through some of these settings that you need to change on your router. Anyway, before we do that, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Cells. If you're looking for cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM keys, then check out the links in the video description to get a 30% discount on all your purchases on CD Key Cells. Once you've chosen your product, you can click on the Buy Now button and you can use my promo code capital B capital R09 and apply that to your order. And this is where you're going to get that 30% discount. Once you submit your order, they would then send you your key. You can either use that key to activate your version of Windows like you see on the screen, or you can upgrade from Home Editions to Pro Editions using that key. Check the video description for more details. Okay, so let's go to number one first, and that is changing the default username and password for that router. Once you've got your router, you want to make sure that you change the default one because it is a major security risk if you don't change it, people who live close to your Wi-Fi network could quite easily guess uh, what that password is if they know what router it is and they would be able to then sign straight in. Another thing you want to do is set up password recovery. This is in case you forget your password, you can then have it uh, recovered quite easily without going through the headache of resetting your router. So if you're one of these people that forget your password all the time, then setting up a password recovery right here is essential to be able to recover the password so you can get back into the menu system without having to reset that router. This next one is neglected by a lot of people and they just don't seem to do it enough and that is updating the firmware regularly. Router manufacturers will release firmware updates to address security vulnerabilities and to improve performance on your router. So check your manufacturer's website or use the built-in uh, update like you can see right here you can click on this and basically update here now if you've bought a brand new router you may be thinking that firmware on that router is fully updated but sadly these sit in warehouses for a very long time and normally the firmware on these are very outdated and you should be updating them immediately if there is an automatic update slider on there i would definitely enable that feature to be able to update automatically that way you know your router is being updated on a regular basis next we're going to talk about enabling strong wi-fi security these routers come with a WPA2 and WPA3 and so on. It's the latest and the most secure Wi-Fi encryption protocol to use. If it's available, enable WPA3 on your router. Otherwise, ensure WPA2 is selected to avoid any older, less secure protocols like a WEP because they are outdated and then no one uses those particular types of security anymore. They're easy to bypass. And if you have a really old router, maybe uh, consider buying yourself a much more modern, secure uh, router because technology changes quite a lot uh, when it comes to things like security. While you're in this section, you may want to choose the right frequency band, which is either 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz or even 6 gigahertz now. This will obviously give you better performance depending on what settings you want to use. I've made videos explaining what both of these are. So make sure you choose the best one that suits your needs. Another good feature is hiding the SSID. This will hide your network name on the network. So you won't be able to see it and neither will anyone else. If they're searching for Wi-Fi networks near them, they won't see yours because it will be hidden. So that's another good feature if you want to add that on uh, once you've got all your network all set up. Now this next feature is not for everyone, but if you do have people using your network, it's best to set up a guest network. This can create a separate guest network uh, rather than them using your main network. So you can set up their own password and it isolates guests from your main network and devices to keep you safe. This adds another layer of security, especially for smart devices. So that's always advisable to set up. It can impact your network speeds if they are abusing the network speeds on the guest network. So bear in mind, you might want to set up some sort of throttling and things like that to uh, you know, restrict how much bandwidth they can have on the guest network. 
if you have family members coming around your home, you can have a QR code set on the fridge or something like that. They can go up there with their phone, scan it, and they'll be able to join the guest network and be able to use it uh, while they're in your house. And once they leave, uh, you can kick them off the network. Enabling firewall features, that's another one. So routers often uh, come with built-in firewalls ensuring your router's firewall is enabled is to block unauthorized traffic and protect you against malware. So that's really important to make sure these are turned on. Uh, some people have these off and you really want to have these on to protect you. Disabling remote administration or remote management. This means if you're not going to be using this feature, this is going to allow you to connect to your router from outside of your network. So if you're not going to be using that, I'd advise you turn this feature off. So if you don't use this feature to prevent others from abusing it or connecting onto it, I would turn it off because otherwise, if they gain access via this method, there may be some sort of bug or vulnerability and they can use it. Also, make sure you disable unused features. There's tons of them on your router. Uh, UPnP is one that you might not want to uh, leave on. You can turn this off right here. If you have any other sort of features that you've set up in the past that you're not using anymore, go through those and uh, disable and delete all of those and remove them from your router settings because it's a security risk at the end of the day. Now, turning features off like this can enhance your security. And if you don't use them, then it's best to turn these particular types of features off to improve overall security on your network. Also, it just alleviates a lot of uh, CPU usage on the router if you're not using any of these. So look for any sort of features that you're not using and turn them off. For instance, port forwarding on an old Nextcloud that I don't use anymore. You're best off just turning this feature off and deleting it from uh, from your network if you're not using it. If you are still using it, obviously leave it on. But if you're not, then remove them. There's no need to have a port forwarding on a feature that you set up some time ago that you're not using anymore. So just remove it from the menu and from the settings inside your router. And this way, uh, it will be a bit more secure. Disable Wi-Fi protection setup, WPS. That's another one that you definitely want to do. This is on by default and you definitely don't want to be leaving this on. WPS simplifies the connecting devices, and it can be very useful, but it's also very vulnerable to brute force attacks, so disabling it enhances your network security. So that is 10 settings to change on your router. This will help enhance your home network security and optimize its performance, so consider adjusting these uh, router settings at your own leisure. These are just some of the settings that I like to change on a router when I'm setting it up. Also, keep tabs on that firmware. Make sure that's fully updated on a regular basis because there is some vulnerabilities that suddenly get found for routers and it's always good to keep them updated. And that's probably one of the things that a lot of people do neglect. Anyway, my name is Ben Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. And I shall catch you in the very next video, or I'll catch you on the Discord server. The link is in the video description. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.